Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. How long after Nate died did you get the autopsy results back? So we got the heart part, which is, so he died of cardiomyopathy of the left ventricle. And the doctor called and just said, we could tell right away he was a football player. Um, his heart was so stretched out. It was so big. And he said, listen, Mrs. Chittick, you, you want all big muscles, just not a big heart. Nobody needs to have a big heart physically. You can have it spiritually, but you don't want a huge heart. And he said, when big men move that much weight around at that speed, it just, it's, it, it overuses it and the muscle just gives out. He said, big men and big animals die early. And he said, um, he was 98% blocked in all of his arteries and, um, basically his left ventricle just had no more give. So he, he explained it to me as a water balloon that had just been stretched out and there was just no pump anymore. And he said, big fat people can live a long time if they sit all day and watch TV. But if you're out playing football at Thanksgiving and you know, on the treadmill yeah, and running, he would run the beach and jump on the trampoline. He's like, your heart, it doesn't do that. He said, your, your husband had a huge, I mean, I love on his autopsy. It said he died of a enlarged heart, which Mm. I just think is beautiful because he had a really big heart. Put that on the tombstone. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that was, um, about three months after he died. And then, and did they also look at his brain? Presumably they didn't. And they then- did, but they didn't have the right tools. So they're like, I don't, we didn't see anything. I'm like, well, what did you do? I mean, it's LA County morgue or yeah. coroners. I don't, they don't think they have the equipment. So when did it first occur to you to maybe get the people at Boston university involved? We had just started to talk about this a couple of years before. And I had gotten like the pamphlet from the NFL that said, you know, whatever the players benefits NFLPA, are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there'd been a lot of talk. I hadn't watched um, Concussion yet with Will Smith. I have since then. But I I knew, and I, I if I'm being completely honest, I thought, oh, well, maybe there'll be some compensation financially if he did have CT. But I'm sure, I, I don't know if he did or I, I don't know. But I want to make sure because it would depend on whether I'd let Jack play. Because mm-hmm. he was going to Loyola and he was going to play football, most likely. So I said, I need to know if football had anything to do with it. The heart thing pretty much sealed the deal, but I was like, I wonder what was going on with Nate's brain. So Boston University was exceptional. Dr. McKee was exceptional. Lisa, the whole group there is phenomenal. And so uh, LA Corner sent his brain tissue and they coordinated it with Boston. And they went and they said, it'll be about a year because we're going to do a... um, We're going to... I don't I'm using the wrong words. We're like pathological and do interviews. Yeah. The clinical side. Clinical. Yeah. And so we're going to interview everybody and talk about it. And his parents had an even more feeling of him floating away and being different as did his brother. And I think I lived day to day with him. So it was harder to tell the the changes because they were so gradual. Where did his brother live? He lives in LA. So we saw him a lot. Mm -hmm. And the irony is his brother is just an exceptional, been sober 14 years, but for so long we were trying to keep Luke alive. And it was just the way that it switched and Nate was gone and Luke is still here in a huge, huge part of our life. But Luke said he felt the same way. Like there was a floating away and his mom especially was like, he is not the son I knew five years ago. How long did she feel that? Five years? Five years. Five years. And his dad? His dad's just a kind man. He, he just, he, he said, um, he doesn't really know how he felt or he doesn't remember, but he knew that something was different about his son, but he can't put his finger on it. So about a year later, a um, little bit, no, maybe like nine months, we got a call and um, honestly, I didn't know, I didn't know what they were going to say, but I didn't think they were going to say what they said. And uh, Dr. McKee got on the phone and just said, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but you know, Nate had stage two, almost stage three uh, CTE. He has lesions all over his brain. And um, I just want you to know that that would have been a really hard life. So, you know, part of my ability to be in gratitude where a lot of other families that have football players aren't is that I don't have to live with a man that's slowly deteriorating before my eyes. There are tons of people who have husbands that are healthy heart wise, but not brain wise. So that's where it gets tricky. And that's where I continue to talk about it. But again, and you know, for people to sort of understand what stage two and stage three is, I mean, junior say was stage two yeah. when he killed himself Aaron Hernandez was stage three when he killed himself. Yeah. Um, 
and you know if you looked at them from the outside notwithstanding sort of the criminal side of what was going on with Aaron you know they could tie their shoes and walk around so you wouldn't look at them and say well they're you know they don't look like someone who's in the last stages of Alzheimer's exactly. disease but if you understand their behavior their moods and what people who are around them would say and of course in the case of Hernandez his behavior is leading up to everything um they weren't you know they were clearly not behaving the way they would have behaved if everything was totally normal. Yeah. And I, I had seen Junior say I at a party about, because um, we used to live in San Diego, and um, there's a good friend of ours who's a very close friend of his, and it was his 70th birthday, and this was about a month before he killed himself, and I remember, like, just, he looked perfectly normal. Like, everything was perfectly, you know, it was just great to see him, and everything seemed totally fine, and I couldn't believe it a month later. Yeah, that's the thing about this disease, and I think it's why it causes so much um, discussion and disagreements. And I mean, I debate this with football guys all the time, and then I debate it with the other side, which is my mother and mother-in-law that are like, it's, football is the devil, and then all the people that we love that are like, listen, it's the name of the game. You know signing up for it. Um, I don't, it's, again, so it's time. Although, you know, you could push back on that and say maybe that's true today. Was it true when they signed up for it? Yeah. Meaning Nate's generation. Yeah. I don't think anybody talked about it. I don't think everybody was lying about it for a really long time. And and now it's interesting. I mean, just to fast forward, there is no compensation anymore for CTE and I'm, I'm making this up. So don't see me, but I I would think it's because anybody that dies that's played in the NFL probably has some level after the number of hits you take. Um, I don't know what to do. I, I cannot imagine living with Nate, the greatest man I ever knew with a severe brain disease that would either put us at risk or him at risk or at, at, at 42. I mean, that's young. That's very young. I mean, did the folks at BU, I don't know much about CTE. Um, did the folks there say, based on what we saw pathologically, this was what the next 10 years would have looked like? I mean, or this was the next five, like, could they tell you this is the rate at which this progresses and this is what you were in store for the next five years? We never got into that, but they said they would give you the list of symptoms of what it would look like. And a lot of it was already there with Nate, depression, um, increased drinking, wanting to be alone, fatigue, um, big outbursts, you know, anger. I mean, Nate never yelled at me in 21 years. I mean, he, we, we got after it in, in arguments, but he never was mean. And I remember I messed up like the internet or some spectrum thing. And he was like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, I told you to fix internet. And I remember we both looked at each other and he was like, sorry. And I was like, whoa. I just had never heard him snap. And that stuff, I think what Dr. McKee was saying is that would have that increased. That was going to increase in mm-hmm. frequency. Because if you look at their brain scans, there's just dead spots. Or like the lesions look like they're just like sitting on that brain and nothing's firing there or it's firing incorrectly. Um, it's not like CT makes you nicer, you know, <laughs> you know, like some people have to mention they're kinder. It's not that way. Um, this is one of the trickiest how, things. How did you tell the kids about that? I and told, was there solace in that? I mean, was that, they actually, do not find any solace in it, which is interesting. Because I, you obviously do. I do a ton. They do not, they go, they'll be like, mom, please. Like, okay, we know he had CT, but he's still dead. We'd rather him be here. They have no... I, my son always says like, mom, please stop telling people we're lucky. He hates it. Is it possible that he didn't witness what you witnessed? Uh, in other words, he never saw that his dad was deteriorating? hundred percent. And I think he was little I mean, he worshiped his dad. He was just 12, you know, he was in sixth grade. Um, I don't think any, they, he was their hero. He, they, he, he never did anything wrong in their eyes. He was the best. So they are like, I don't know what, what story you're making up about this CTE thing, but that's, I don't, we can't even comprehend dad not being dad. Um, so I try to honor that now because, yeah. but I will say what Jack did honor was I'll never play football. And there was something in my son's eyes that was grateful he didn't have to. He won't admit that, but I promise you when he's 40, he'll tell you, I didn't want to go do that sport. 